Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what is reticulate venation? So let us have a look. Here veins and veinlets are irregularly arranged to form a network. So as I said, on the leaf blade, these structures, veins and veinlets will be like haphazardly present anywhere. It is not in a specific pattern. So it is generally seen in the dicotyledonous plants, the plants with two cotyledons, right? For example, hibiscus, rose, people, these are some of the examples of plants where we see reticulate venation. So here you can see the example of reticulate venation where if you see there is no specific pattern. Some are going like this, some are going like this. Some are going like this, again here, again here, again you have one from here, one from here. So you basically have these veins and veinlets arranged haphazardly somewhere like this. So that is known as reticulate venation. So you can, I'm sure that you would be having these kind of plants in your house, for example, hibiscus or rose or people. So you can actually observe the leaves of such plants and you can understand what is reticulate venation. Now again, in reticulate venation also, there are different types of reticulate venation. I mean, even though the veins and veinlets are arranged haphazardly, but still there are two categories into which they can be divided. One is called pinnate reticulate and the other one is called palmate reticulate. So what happens in pinnate reticulate? So let us first see pinnate reticulate. So here we have one strong midrib many lateral veins. So now here a new term has been introduced that is midrib. So what is midrib? It is the single strong vein which is present at the center. For example, if you have a leaf like this, so you will see that there is one vein which is very strong and which is present at the middle and from there others, other veins arise. So this strong vein which is present at the middle is known as mid rib. So in pinnate reticulate there is one strong mid rib which is distinctly visible and from that mid rib many lateral veins are emerged. So a network is formed. Example of pinnate reticulate is a mango leaf. So here you can see the example of a mango leaf. So here you can prominently see this mid rib. So this is the midrib and from this midrib, these are the lateral veins. Now the midrib and the lateral veins together form a network. So this is pinnate reticulate. The next one is palmate reticulate. So first was pinnate reticulate, the next is palmate reticulate. So this palmate name is derived from the word palm. So if you look at your palm, so you can actually resemble this. So in palmate reticulate what happens? There are many strong ribs. So there are no, no, there is no concept of one single midrib. Like here you had only one strong midrib. But in this case you will have many strong midribs. And this can be again of two types. It can be convergent or divergent. So we will discuss them in detail just now. Some of the examples where we see palmate reticulate are Zyzephus or China Rose. So this is how it looks like. So if you look at these leaves, you see there is not a single midrib. This is a strong rib. This is again a strong rib. This one is again a strong rib. So there are many strong ribs. Similarly, if you look at this, you have this one is a strong rib. Again, this one, this one is a strong rib. This one is a strong rib. Again, this one is also a strong rib. So, these are all strong ribs. So, these are palmate reticulate. Now, just now I told that they are of two types. One is convergent and one is divergent. So, what is a convergent palmate reticulate? Convergent. What is convergent meaning? Convergent is derived from converge. Converge means when many things meet together. So, when a lot of things, a lot of different things coming from different ends but meeting up at the same point. So, this means that 
all the main veins converge towards the tip so the main veins converge towards the tip so the example of a convergent palmate reticulate is zygzephus so this is how a zygzephus leaf looks like here if you see this is a strong rib this is again a strong rib this is again a strong rib now if you look at the tip at the tip all these three leaves are almost meeting each other so all the main veins or all the strong ribs are converging towards the tip so this is an example of convergent palmate reticulate leaf or pa convergent palmate reticulate venation now talking about the divergent type of uh, venation here the main veins will diverge towards the margin so here the veins diverge away from the tip so away from the tip means towards the margin so look at this leaf that is the leaf of a china rose here you can see these are the strong ribs now these strong ribs are not meeting each other they are going away from each other and they are going away towards the margin margin that is boundary of the leaf so they are going away from the tip and they are going towards the margin so this is an example of a divergent palmate reticulate and this is an example of convergent palmate reticulate right i hope that it is clear to you what are the types of reticulate venation okay now but here did you observe one thing that the veins and veinlets are not arranged in any specific fashion in both the cases whether it is a pinnate reticulate or a palmate reticulate the arrangement is haphazard it is just that in pinnate reticulate you have one strong midrib whereas in palmate reticulate you have many strong midribs okay let us now talk about the second type of venation that is parallel venation now unlike reticulate venation here we will see that the veins and veinlets are arranged in a specific fashion they are no more arranged haphazardly so what is that specific fashion their veins run parallel to each other in the lamina so here in the picture of this leaf if you see if you look at the veins you actually see that they are run parallel to each other so there is no haphazard arrangement here so it, everything is systematic and that is why it is known as parallel venation it is generally seen in monocotyledonous plants like bamboo banana cereals or grasses so there we generally see these kind of leaves so if you want to compare uh, the parallel venation with reticulate venation you can actually take the leaf of a hibiscus flower and a grass leaf and if you compare both you will very clearly be able to see the difference between parallel and reticulate venation now again this parallel venation also have types so there are again similarly similar kind of types the first is pinnate parallel venation and the second one will be palmate parallel venation so let us first talk about pinnate parallel here again so whenever the word pinnate comes it means one strong midrib whenever the term palmate comes it is many strong midribs now do you understand why palmate means many strong ribs when you look at your palm you have five fingers right so it is not just so each finger represents a rib each finger represents a strong rib so if you look at your palm you have many strong ribs so that is why the name palmate so palmate means many strong ribs like many strong fingers in your palm whereas when you talk about pinnate it is one strong midrib and then many lateral veins so it is somewhat like this here you have one strong midrib and then so many veins so here the lateral veins run parallel to each other because it is a parallel venation so example would be a banana leaf or a ginger leaf talking about palmate parallel as i said just now i don't think now you will ever get confused whenever the word palmate comes it means there are many strong ribs and when it is palmate parallel that means many strong ribs plus the lateral veins are parallel to each other 
So many strong veins run parallel to each other. So here the strong veins will be parallel to each other. For example, here you can see these lines which you see, they are all strong veins. And these veins are all running almost parallel to each other. So this is palmate parallel. Now again, this palmate parallel can be of two types. It can be convergent or it can be divergent. So now I don't think I need to explain much about convergent and divergent. When I say convergent, that means the strong veins run parallel from base to apex. So here you, you can see the strong veins are running parallel. This is the base and this is the apex. So from base to apex, the strong veins are running parallel. This is known as convergent palmate parallel. Now when I talk about divergent, it means that the strong veins arise from the tip of the petiole and diverge towards margin in more or less parallel manner. So here you can see from the base of the petiole it arises like this and then it diverges towards the margin. However, they try to be more or less parallel to each other. I mean see, I am not talking about exact geometry right now that you actually start measuring if they are parallel or not. They are not exactly parallel obviously because they are starting from one point and anyways two parallel lines never meet at a point. So they are not exactly parallel, I agree to that, but they try to maintain at least a kind of parallel distance. So, but how in case of reticulate venation, you saw that there were veinlets arising from here and there and it was creating a network. But in this case, it is not like that. So everything is systematic. You don't have haphazard arrangement anywhere. So this is an example of divergent palmate pattern. So one example of uh, divergent palmate parallel would be palm leaf. An example of a convergent palmate parallel would be uh, say grass, bamboo, rice. These are all examples of convergent palmate parallel. Right? See, once you understand the concept and then if you keep these diagrams in your mind, I mean, you will by yourself remember all these things. So with this, I think I will end my discussion on venation. We have covered venation. So now let us quickly look at an overview of the venation types. What is venation? It is the arrangement of veins on the lamina of a leaf. There are two types of venation, reticulate venation and parallel venation. In reticulate venation, the veins and veinlets are arranged in a haphazard fashion, forming a network. Whereas in a parallel venation, all the veins are arranged parallel to each other. Now again, reticulate venation is of two types, pinnate reticulate and palmate reticulate. So pinnate reticulate is the one where we have one strong midrib and all other lateral veins are haphazardly arranged. Palmate reticulate, there are many strong ribs and the lateral veins, many strong ribs and plus the lateral veins all haphazardly arranged. Similarly, parallel venation is of two types, pinnate parallel and palmate parallel. In pinnate parallel, you have one strong midrib and all of the lateral veins running parallel to each other. In palmate parallel, we, you again have many strong ribs which are running parallel to each other. So with this, we will end our discussion on venation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.